Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be using the new start stamp set from Spellbinders to create a trio of cards and in the meantime we're going to get a little inky with them. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Last month, Spellbinders reached out to me to see if I would like to try out some of the new stamps in their Card Maker 2 collection. And you know that I'm crazy about their dies, so I was like, yes, please, when they wanted me to try out the stamps. So today, I'm going to be sharing the first video of two that uses stamps from this collection. I do have the entire collection linked in that description box below if you want to check it out. In today's video, I'll be using the New Start stamp set, which is a collection of eight stamps, and I fell in love with the butterflies because you know I love a good butterfly stamp, but what definitely drove it home that I wanted this were all of the inspiring sentiments. I'll put a picture up here on screen now so you can read those. Like I mentioned in the intro, with the cards today, we're going to get a little inky. I'm going to create some different types of inked backgrounds as the base for my cards. The inspiration for this came from a recent video I watched over on the Creative Chelsea channel where she used some reinkers to kind of do like a paint pour but with um, watered down reinkers. So that will be the final card, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But before that, I'll be using some ink pads in kind of the same colors to make a couple other backgrounds. As I go along in the process, if I add any more products or tools, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if you have any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my first card, I'm going to be doing what Mary Gunn of Craft Roulette calls Crinkle Inkle. I will be crinkling up some plastic wrap, tapping it into the ink pads, and making a background. Now, the cardstock I'm using is some Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I just thought this would take ink better. And what I do when I ball up the saran wrap, I just then tap it onto the cardstock. I did decide to do mine in a diagonal from the upper right down to the lower left and in between each color I kind of open my saran wrap up and then crinkle it back together hoping that I don't contaminate the ink colors. Now if you were worried about that you could use a separate piece of saran wrap for each ink color but mine seemed to work okay so I just went through all four colors until I ended with the blue color in the bottom left. My ink colors today are inspired by the reinkers that my friend Danny let me borrow for the last card of the day. Off camera, I cut this piece down to three and a half by four and three quarters, and now I'm going to be using those same ink colors to do some stamping. For the stamp from the set, I decided to go with the smallest butterfly, the one in the upper left, and I will be stamping it in each of the colors, trying to keep it in the area where it's the same color as the background. So I'm going to start with the pink in the upper right, going down to the blue in the bottom left. Because I want my butterfly to hang off the top right, I did need to move my cardstock in a little bit before I set it up inked it up and stamped it. Between each color I did make sure to clean my stamp well but just in case there was some ink left on the stamp when I go to set it up for the second, third, and fourth times I brought in a piece of clear cardstock that I always keep right underneath the mouse pad in my Misty. 
This just gets laid on top of the card or piece that I'm currently stamping. And then I can set up the next stamp on top of it without there being any ink transfer. I continued stamping, cleaning, and stamping until I had butterflies in each of the four colors. After the butterflies were all stamped, I chose the sentiment for this card and I went with can't wait to see you fly. I thought the butterflies rising from bottom left to upper right just kind of reminded me of a flight pattern, so I thought it went well with the sentiment. I set this up in the lower right hand corner and I did make sure it was pretty straight on the door of my Misty before I inked it up and stamped it twice with Versamark just so it was nice and juicy. And then I poured on some detail silver embossing powder and heat set that until the powder melted. I finished this piece off camera by matting my stamped piece with some silver glitter cardstock. I added a few glittery sequins and then put this onto a pink cardstock base. On the inside, I added a piece of white cardstock for my sentiment and I stamped off the same butterfly from the front in the lower right hand corner for a little added decoration. I wanted to stop by with a quick heads up for you about Spellbinder's Black Friday blowout sale. If you are watching this video near the time that it goes live, which is on Thanksgiving of 2021, they are having a special sale with lots of great deals. I will have an affiliate link in the description box below if you want to check it out. Some of these deals last until November 30th, 2021. Now let's go ahead and move on to the second card. For the second card, I will be using the same colors as card one, but this time I chose the little ink spots. My piece of Bristol Smooth is once again five and a half by four and a quarter. And for this background, I'm gonna be swiping a little ink. You'll see here that I just took each of the cubes and swiped it down from the top of the cardstock and probably two or three times each, just depending how dark I wanted it. Now you might have noticed that each one is a slightly different length. This is just to add a little variation and motion. Now this technique, I believe Laurel Beard um, named it swinking. I'm not sure if I've tried it before, but this was super fun, super quick, and super easy. Let me know in the description box below if you've ever tried swinking. Off camera, I cut some off the top and sides since the ink landed a little heavier there. So my piece is now five inches wide by three and three quarters inches tall. For this card, I chose the butterfly from the set that looks like it's sitting on something, the one from the side. And for my sentiment, I chose the follow your dreams. I again, just love all these inspiring sentiments. I did go ahead and set up both stamps at the same time on my scrap of white cardstock, but I did only ink up the butterfly with the blue ink and stamp it. Now you might see me stamping most of these images twice, and that's just because the stamp sets are new and they need to be conditioned a little bit. But after two stamps, this looked just great. Once the butterfly had been stamped, I brought back in my Versamark ink and silver embossing powder and I stamped and heat embossed the sentiment. Then I took this piece off screen and cut both of them out and I decided at that point I didn't like the sentiment being on a strip by itself. So I pulled back in the base that I had inked up and I ended up stamping my sentiment just right onto the card base. Once again, I finished this card off camera by adding a glittery silver mat, some glittery silver sequins, and then I did a stamp off on the inside. This time though, I did use an orange card base. It's time for the third and final card where we're going to be getting a little extra inky and for this I'll be using those borrowed re-inkers and I will have the video that inspired this linked in that description box below. I do want to give a shout out to my friend Danny for letting me borrow these. I do have her channel linked below as well. 
Besides the reinkers, I got out some small white cups for my water and my ink colors. And instead of pouring my ink like Chelsea did in her video, I will be using that plastic pipette there. Now to hold all of the drips, I just brought in a plastic container I keep here in my craft room. There was one other item I needed to protect my work surface, and that is just this cheap dining tray that I got at Ikea. I like the size of it that it fits everything, and also because it has the wall around it, nothing is going to leak off onto my work surface in case I tip something over. Since I don't have access to a sink in my craft room, I just keep this bottle of water down here and fill it up as needed. You'll notice on the side of the cups there is the word Dixie, and I just tried my best to fill each of those cups up to the bottom of that word. Once again, I have my piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. You are definitely going to want something for this that takes a lot of water. The first color I'm going to do is blue, and I put five drops of the reinker into the cup, and then I brought in this cute little spoon that I keep in my craft room that I bought at the Dollar Tree to mix that up. Then I grab a little bit of ink with my pipette and make some puddles on my cardstock, and then I just try to move those around, getting them to fill the space as best as I can. You'll notice on Chelsea's that hers are much better filling. Mine are more kind of like veiny looking. I think you can do it however you want, but you move it around and then the excess can go in the container below. And when you think you have enough of the color on there, I brought in my heat tool and I just went around drying out all of the ink. Now some did have to fall off into the container, but I really did try to dry all the ink as best as I could because you'll see here that where it pooled more, that there are some darker areas. I thought this almost had kind of an alcohol ink look without the alcohol inks. Before moving on to the next color, I do need to do a little cleanup. The first thing I did was suck just some clean water into my pipette to clean it out and that cup, this is its sole purpose, is just for cleanup. Then I wiped off the outside of the pipette and my spoon. Next I did the five drops of green into the water and then I used the same process of dripping on the ink and drying it with the heat tool. Now while I do that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today I would like to know, have you ever used reinkers in your paper crafting? If so, let me know how, and if you haven't tried it, do you have a favorite way to make different backgrounds? I would love for you to let me know in that comment section below, and don't forget to include the hashtag hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. Once that green ink was dry, I moved on to the pink and orange, but I did do these off screen. Here's a close up look at the finished piece. Now I did get some brown puddles, luckily most were on the edge, and the ones on the inside will be covered up later. For this card, I will be stamping the remaining butterfly once again with Versamark ink and embossing it with the Detail Silver embossing powder. I don't know about you, but every time I melt the powder, I just fall in love with embossing again. Give this video a thumbs up if you love embossing too. I fussy cut this butterfly off camera and then I brought in one of my trusted Spellbinder sets the large circle nest abilities. I chose two different ones from the set. The first smaller one will be cut from white cardstock and the second one from a medium weight vellum. You'll notice here too that I did go ahead and run the smaller piece through an embossing folder off camera. The sentiment I chose for this card reads, you are one of a kind, and to ensure that I stamped it on the correct place, I temporarily held the matted circles in place with my magnet while I set up the stamp and then stamped it and once again heat embossed it with the Detail Silver powder. 
After the powder was set, I finished this card off screen. I did use the glitter cardstock mat once again and the glittery sequins, but for my butterfly this time, I only adhered the body and then I lifted the wings up for some extra dimension. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's trio of cards using the New Start stamp set from Spellbinders. I know that I had tons of fun getting inky and trying new things, and I hope that you enjoyed seeing it. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.